Hi, right, how you doing all? Come to a um, viaduct. Got my um, Munisi 15mm F4 and I haven't really had a chance to shoot much with it. It's brilliant for autumn pictures because you can get um, starbursts at like F4, F5, whatever. Um, but it's a really wide lens. So I've come to this viaduct. Bit of a beauty. And I'm going to try and take advantage of the wideness of the 15mm. Obviously full frame 15mm on my um, Canon EOS R. I'm hoping I might be able to do something with it. I've, I've had a look from this kind of angle, but because of all the greenery in the background underneath, it's not really, I'm not used to that wide, so I'm gonna have to have a play and see what I can do. <laughs> and I'm battling with the sun as well. I've come at the wrong time, the sun's up there, and knowing how wide the bloody 15 mil is, I don't want to be shooting from this side. So I'm probably gonna shoot from the other side. There's some funky clouds up there. If I can get a load of that in the backdrop, get some nice uprights. Give this um, Nissi 15mm a real test and see what it's like. And see if my filter system is wide enough to take 15mm. So I'll get set up and I'll uh, chat you what I'm doing. All right, I've only just spotted this. Like I said earlier on, the Nissi, you get lovely sunburst, starburst at F4. So I'm thinking of looking up through there. If I get starburst out of that, I've got some nice uprights. Um, and kind of, I like the mix of uh, the natural tree Mother Nature doing its thing against kind of the man-made stonework. If I can be better off with not as many leaves, to be honest, but you can just see it in the background. But yeah, if I can get a sunburst there, lush, funky greens. Nissi 15mm f4. Absolutely love this lens. It's only about 400 quid. And I know I've, I've, al I've always heard people say our oh, primes are so sharp. Um, all my I've never had a prime lens apart from the 50mm which is a plasticky crappy thing and I mean this is this 24 to 105 the RF is, is sharp um, but obviously it's got so much glass in there and the zoom range from 24 to 105 is a lot to ask this was the first proper prime I've ever really used and even though it was only like four less than 500 quid it is so sharp unbelievably sharp because there's no zoom and it's just set at 15mm and yeah, looking back at the pictures, it's unbelievable. So Nissi for your first lens, I absolutely love it. It's manual focus. But I focus manually anyway in landscape photography. Like I've said before, it's all nice and slow. Camera on a tripod, take me time. I'll use focus peaking with this lens. If anybody wants a video on focus peaking, just let us know. Um, I mentioned it briefly in my last video. Brilliant for, for manual lenses. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna chuck this baby on. Hopefully I've been gassing too long and the sun's gone. I hate changing lenses out in the field, but means must and all that. Quite a nice big element on it. It's quite a small lens. Yeah, quite like it. Anyway, I'm going to quick bang in my gums, have a look, see if I can get some pictures. <laughs> the way to find the sunburst, so you set your camera up, put all your settings in, your aperture, your ISO and all the rest of it. And if you slowly rock back and forth, just where the sun's cutting past a tree is where you want it. Otherwise you just get anywhere. You just, you just want to rock back and forth with the camera. The only problem with shooting into the sun, you've got to make sure the front element of your lens is tip top, crispy sharp, no dirt, really, really clean. So you've got to make sure you give it a good old clean because you've got sunlight coming right into it. And if there's any shit on the front of that lens, boom, nightmare. <laughs> Check this out. Sixth of a second, ISO 100. I've literally just moved a little bit. I like this log. Can you see that in the picture? There's a log in the foreground here. Not, not the best foreground element, but it's a bit of a, it kind of leads you into the picture a little bit. Then you've got the, the beech tree that goes up. I kind of rock back and forward and uh, got a lush starburst. Look at that, f4, 13th of a second. Look at the starburst, f4. On my other lenses, I've got to shoot at like f14, 15, 16 to get that starburst. Not the greatest picture, but just cool. I think when the autumn gets here, get some cool shots. Leading lines of the path, starburst through the trees, very nice. Anyway, I'm going to see if I can find a shot on the bridge now.
Right, found a cool composition. I prefer to shoot in landscape than portrait format, but for this particular shot, you can probably guess why. Using my diagonals, it's coming in from the top left hand corner of the screen, and it's cutting right down across. So basically, one side of the picture is the bridge, and the other side of the picture is just clouds and sky. But because the clouds and sky are so much brighter, all I've done, shooting at f11, 13th of a second, focused on the leg of the, um, not bridge, what do you call it? Come to me in a minute. Don't get old because your memory goes shit. What was it called? Train bridge, that'd do. Viaduct. Focused on the closest leg of the viaduct, but the right hand side of the screen is too bright. So, I'm going to get my filters out. I'll set my exposure for the darkest part of the scene. And when I look at my histogram and I look at the back of the screen, the sky is just too bright. So, I just want a graduated filter to slow that top corner down. Check this out Manfrotto, Canon, Nissi, Lee. See, we could all play together. I haven't got a 0.9 graduated filter because I broke it. So it's going to have to be a 0.6 grad, I think. Mind you, that's quite a straight edge. I might be able to use, see if a 6 would do anything. That's all I'm going to do now. Hopefully when I pull it in, it's going to make that side, you know, not enough. That's why I love my 0.9 grad filter. Luckily, when you look at the picture back, I've got the straight edge of the bridge cutting right through the shot. So I can get away with using this beast. Look at that. That's what you call an R edge grad. So I can slide that in, put the clear bit over the bridge and the darker bit over the sky. This should make a huge difference. It's almost too much, to be honest. My nine hard grad filter right up against the straight line of the viaduct, turning out to be about an eighth of a second ISO 100. There's a bit of a distraction on the right with the bushes there and the other leg of whatever that is there, but um, it's quite a cool shot. I think what I might do is this shot here, but with um, with a big stopper on, go for a bit of a long exposure. I reckon it'd be quite a cool shot. See what I can do. How mental's that? There's me in the last video moaning I don't like the big stopper. Two videos in a row that I'm, I've been out of YouTube for a while now because I've just been so busy, but the first two videos I've put up, I've used the big stopper. <laughs> anyway, I quite like that. Bit of movement in the clouds there, bit of a rush. 30 seconds is probably too long to be honest. So I might drop the aperture down. So, you know, it's, it's good, anyone can just bang the lead big stopper on, but you need to get the movement in the clouds just right. And you don't want a big ball of just poo. It needs to be quite nice. So I'm gonna have a bit more of a play round and see what I can find, but I'm getting there. Yeah, lead 0.9 hard grad, big stopper. Having a look down, look in the older puddle. And there's a bit of a reflection down there, look. So, got my camera down there. I'm not gonna go for a long exposure or anything. I just like the reflection. F11, focused on the bridge in the reflection. F11 should be quite a good depth of field to get quite a lot in focus. 10th of a second. What do you think? Cool. Hey, right, doing all that's about it. It's only a quick, quick, quick outing. Still trying to get used to this lens, but the Nissi 15mm f4, I really like it for less than 500 quid. I know to a lot of people that don't do photography, 500 quid's a lot of money, but as far as lenses go, that's mega cheap. I know you're stuck at 15mm, which is quite, you either love it or hate it. But yeah, I just thought I'd get a couple of shots in there. I wanted to give it a good test to see the, you know, the viaduct real wide. My 24mm just went to cover that. Um, and I sold my 17 to 40 mil because I just, just wasn't very sharp on the edges. I think this is sharper and I was always shooting at 17 mil anyway. So that's why I got this bad boy. Would like to have stuck with Canon. 
but um, that, that 17 to 40 was old. And I quite like this. Don't mind manual focus because I always focus, focus manually anyway. Um, but yeah, a couple shots there that show what this thing's capable of. Um, and I just wanted to see, stacking up all the filters on my Lee filter holder, whether I'd get much of a vignette in. Because that's, yeah, what was that? That was a ND filter with a big, a big stopper and the graduated filter. And I think there's room for one more filter. I'm quite impressed with it. I hope you like the shots. Cheers for watching. See you in the next vid, which isn't going to have a big stopper in it. I'm dying to get out and shoot with my Pro Glass, the one that was replaced by my gorgeous wife because I broke my old one. So, cool. See you soon. Don't know when you're going to see this video, but I'll get it out eventually. Cheers. Bye. Right, don't go yet. Don't go yet. Cheers for watching if you've got this far. Here's a couple of shots that I've kind of edited a bit different to what I normally do. Sometimes I like playing around with colour, orange and teal, or making a, um, a green shot look autumnal. I love I love orange and teal and I love autumnal shots. So this is this is a couple of those pictures you've already seen. This these these have been a little bit light ruined just because sometimes it's cool to play with colour. What do you think of them? If any of you like them and you want to know how I change the colours or whatever, give me a shout. Sometimes it's nice to have something a bit funky, a bit different on your hung on your wall, especially the one with the viaduct and the the the, the blue sky and kind of the tealy orange foreground. Sometimes it's good to think if someone's going to hang something on their wall, if they say if they've, if they've got an orange couch or they, they've got certain coloured things in their rooms, sometimes I look at a picture, don't, don't worry about with all pictures, but sometimes I'll funk up some colours in a picture when I'm editing it, thinking that might look cool in someone's kitchen or dining room or lounge. So um, yeah, these are um, these have just been changed a little bit. We haven't got to stick to the rules, rules are there to be broken, and sometimes it's nice when it's raining to just edit away and go with it. Cool. Cheers. Bye.